Okay guys, Private Jack here. This is part 15 of the series on how to create a butterfly in Blender and get it into Source Filmmaker. So we've gone through, we've fixed our textures up, everything's working hunky-dory, and one thing that I forgot to do was actually compile the original model. So let's go back and do that quickly. So here's the original model, and what we're going to do is we're going to go into Source uh, blender source tool, uh, blender source tools, and we're just going to re-export everything just so that everything is hunky dory. Come down here and click on the QC button. And let's bring up the session window if it's open. Shrink this down a bit so that we can see what's happening, and actually compile the model. Come on. Poof, way it goes. And happy, happy. This is the information that you're going to get when you compile a model. This is Blender Source Tools acting as an intermediate between the QC and Source, uh, the uh, Source <clears throat> Studio MDL EXE and if you get a good compile it's going to show a little window up here we'll do it again model compiled in and then over here we can have a look and see what's hap actually happened now if there's an error in the model you saw it when I tried to compile the uh, the advanced model in the last session you're going to get uh, model failed to compile and then you're going to get a whole bunch of error information here and then you have to decipher what that error is and fix it. Okay, so this model is now compiled. Let's just go into our mo uh, Half-Life model viewer and load that model up. So creatures, Butterfly 2, here's my butterfly, open it up and the textures are all right because we did the the VMTs properly and it has its sequence idle and flapping and we're good to go so let's change that back to the idle sequence what we're going to talk about in this session is actual hitboxes okay so we're not quite finished compiling models yet. We've got two models that we have to work with. We have to build hitboxes for. And the reason why we want hitboxes is that Source Filmmaker will try to create default hitboxes on a model. However, sometimes those hitboxes do not encompass the default ones, do not encompass the whole model. And you get pieces of mesh poking through the hitbox. Well, my experience, I'm saying my experience, has been that if the camera from Source Filmmaker can see any exposed mesh on a model, that model is going to disappear from camera view. It just vanishes. And a lot of people have been asking the question in the group, well, why is my model clipping or, or, or disappearing when I, when I try to film it? The reason is, is because there is exposed mesh on the model. That's the theory. So to fix this up, what we're going to do is we're actually going to manually build hitboxes using the Half-Life Model Viewer. So, to do this, what we need to do is we need to go into the Bones tab. This is where the hitbox information is held. Let's go back to render just for a second. I'm going to clip on hitboxes. If there were any hitboxes on this model, turning on this check mark will display any hitboxes that are available. Okay? We can see here that there are none. I'm going to go back into the bones tab now and I'm going to have a look at my at all the bones, right? So 
with this particular model all I want to happen is for the entire model to be encased in one hitbox okay and that includes when it's in its sequence that when it's flapping the wings do not come outside the actual hitbox and I'm going to build that hitbox on the body bone because that is the main bone of the actual butterfly to do this if I clip on hitbox here highlight clip box there's none if I turn off auto generate tip hip boxes there's still none okay so what I have to do is I have to actually generate a hip box how do I do that quite simply I select the bone that I want the hip box to be a uh, to be uh, uh, associated to and click over here add a hitbox now here is a hitbox and it is extremely big it encompasses the whole butterfly but I don't need it to be this big and I can adjust the size of the hitbox here in this menu right down here now hitbox origin is zero 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 that means that the center of the hip box is on that body bone okay right at the start right at the uh, origin point of that body bone okay I like it to be there because that body bone is in the center of my model pretty much so to adjust the size of the hip box we've got hip box size values down here okay so let's have a look and see which one moves what I'm going to decrease this one and I'm going to make it about eight now nothing happened the reason why is every time you make a change you have to update the hitbox so that shrank it down to there now you can see that with the flapping motion I have mesh being exposed to the camera if I was to export or if I was to open this up in uh, Source Filmmaker after adding this hitbox to the QC um, the model may clip out when I'm trying to film it so I want those wings to be completely encompassed so I'm going to change this one to 10 update the hitbox and now the wings are completely encompassed in the hitbox it's wide enough just to keep the butterfly inside now I want to adjust the size of the height. Now if I use this one, this should shrink on the X axis or the, the Y axis. Uh, X in this particular case, see how it's, uh, this is X, this is Y, and this is Z. Okay, so I'm going to shrink this one down to 8 update the hitbox and my butterfly is still encompassed inside that hitbox which is good that's exactly what I want now I want to shrink it so that it's smaller on the up down axis the Z I'm going to shrink this one down to probably around six just as long as these wings do not clip through the top or bottom of the hitbox and that minimizes the actual striking zone if I was to bring this into a game that uses hitboxes as a uh, method of determining whether or not the model has been hit or not okay now that I've got that hitbox pretty much where I want it how do I get it to actually apply to the actual model well here there's a generate QC button click on that and what's going to happen is the hitbox information for this hitbox is going to write to your clipboard now we go back into the QC's and I want the original butterfly here I'm going to come into the butterfly 2 QC that I used to compile that model and somewhere in here not within a comment I'm going to Control V and drop that hitbox information. Now, if you really don't want people to know you cheated and used uh, Half-Life Model Viewer to create your hitbox, 
just delete the comment lines. There we go. Now that that is in there, we're going to file save that particular QC. Come back into Blender. Pick up on that original butterfly. I'm going to close out uh, Half Life, uh, the Half Life model viewer after I turn off the sequence. And I'm going to turn off Highlight Hitbox. So if I look here and I turn on hitboxes, I've got a hitbox now, right? Okay. Originally, I wouldn't have that because it didn't create it. I created that hitbox. So I'm going to close out Half-Life Model Viewer. And now that I've added the information to the QC and saved it, I'm going to recompile the model. I don't have to re-export anything because I didn't change anything on the model in Blender. So all I have to do is recompile. Boop! way it goes. One model compiled. Let's open up Half-Life Model Viewer again and reload this model. Butterfly 2. Okay, doesn't look like anything has changed. However, now when I click the hitbox button, I've got a hitbox. So that's adding hitboxes to models in uh, uh, for Source Filmmaker. Let's do it again with the advanced model. Okay, so file load the model. Creatures, butterfly helm. Here's the butterfly. I click on hitboxes, there's none there. Okay, so now I'm going to turn off that checkbox, go into bones. I'm going to select the body bone because that's where I want the hitbox to actually form to encompass the model. Now, I could create individual hitboxes for all these bones, but I don't need to because I'm going to encompass it on one. Okay, I'm going to turn on the highlight hitbox for that. There's none there. Okay, so now I'm going to turn off auto generate hitboxes. I'm going to generate a hitbox. Uh, generate a hitbox and resize it. 10, 8, and six. Now let's play the animation just to make sure that uh, it's encompassed. Where did my hitbox go? Well, there it is. I don't have the actual hitbox turned on in the other views. So let's have a quick look. Completely encased, which is good. I'm going to click the Generate QC button. Now I'm going to go back into that Butterfly Helm QC. And somewhere in here, probably just before the texture group, I'm going to drop that. Come up here, take out my comments, because I want people to think that I actually knew what I was doing. File Save. Turn off the highlight hitbox, close Half-Life Model Viewer. I should have actually killed the animation, but I didn't. Make sure this is saved. Go back into my Blender uh, session for that particular model. I don't have to re-export anything. I just have to come into Blender Source Tools and recompile the model. One model compiled. Open up the Half-Life Model Viewer. There it is. Load up that model. There's my model. Still flapping because I didn't turn off, turn off the sequence. 
come back in here to the render tab, turn on the hitbox, and there's my hitbox. So this thing is now encompassed and ready for use in Source Filmmaker. That's it on hitboxes. Any questions? Down in the comments. I'll try to answer as fast as I can. And with that, I'm going to say Private Jack out.